uh, everybody's looking forward to lunch. I can kind of see and sense the feeling. Uh, so maybe we should just start by getting up and just shaking the legs a bit. Anybody would be up for that? Nobody? One, two, three? Wow. OK, people are waking up. Good. Then let's, uh, <laughs> let's get started. All right. So uh, my name is Laust Axelsen. I come from PatientSky, where I work as a partner. And uh, I don't know how many of you guys know PatientSky from before. Anybody? Three people, five people. OK, so we're not that well known just yet. So a little bit about us. We're a Norwegian-based company. We were established in 2014 by myself and five other guys, basically. Uh, we don't have basements in Norway. We have these cabins that we do startups in, but it's basically the same thing. We have about 4.5 million patients in our software today. And we have the most downloaded and popular health app in Norway, mobile app, on iOS and Android. And beside that, we do a lot of software for GC, uh, GPs, physical therapists, chiropractors, etc. And I think the newest uh, category that we just installed was horseback therapy. I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but that exists. And uh, all the way to oncology and, and cancer clinics. So we have a far range of, uh, of customers. And they range from a single user into these large enterprises with multiple locations, departments, and whatnot. OK. We're currently represented in two countries at the end of this year, and hopefully about five countries in Q3 2020. So my talk today was supposed to handle, or was supposed to be about like the next generation of EHRs. And um, I truly believe that the next generation will be quite different than the one that we're used to today, where we have these big monoliths that we already talked about. And one of the major challenges is getting these big monoliths to kind of communicate with each other, right? So what we've done is that we kind of flipped this around a bit. So we've created something we call the Patient Sky Platform. And the Patient Sky Platform is kind of like it's a platform, uh, as the word kind of attends, right? So the cool thing about this platform is that it's 100% web-based. It's pretty cool. It's 90% open source. We have a few dependencies, uh, some good ones, though, so we don't want to get rid of those. Uh, we use OpenEHR and Fire in collaboration, just like the talk before. We have a patient-centric approach, which means that basically the patients who use or the patients who uh, get to a clinic that is using PatientSky would kind of be able to share their data across different vendors. So if you go to your GP's office and your physical therapist, they can actually share the data between them. Everything is based on microservices, very popular word. What that actually means for us is that the, we have about 80 microservices in our cloud, and those can communicate with each other. Those can gain value from each other, and they are also completely isolated and technology independent. It's, of course, cloud-based. We're not using Azure or AWS. We've built our own infrastructure on this stuff for many reasons, but, um, but yeah. And lastly, and most importantly, it's an open platform. So if anybody in here has like this entre entrepreneurial and want to create the next big thing, uh, translation services or board administration or whatever it might be, you can build this on the Patient Sky platform if you do choose so. So in short, you kind of have all the suppliers in the middle doing different modules or Lego blocks. I'm Danish, so I love Legos, and people kind of kind of. Uh, can understand when you everything you can describe everything with Lego blocks. So we use Lego blocks as well, and we have the data level here, which is using the Open EHR, and we work together with Better Mar Marant, and we have a presentation level on top. So this is like the platform in short, and what this ends up giving, or what we're like we're pretty far along. As I said, we already have four and a half million patients, and we're facilitating a lot of this stuff for physical therapists, GPs. Um, chiropractors and whatnot, and constantly just evolving every time we can build a new Lego block trying to move across uh, the different verticals. The cool thing about being placed in a web-based application is that we can't, like, you support all the popular operating system out of the box, right? You can go down to your electronic store, pick up whichever laptop or whatever you want to do, 
and then come back to your clinic, pop that up, log on to the Wi-Fi, and then you're up and running with patients. And one of the other things that we've done a lot of work with is in the mobile business. So as, as I said before, we have, one of the, we have the most popular healthcare app in Norway, and it's represented on both stores. So this is a really, like instead of having these very heavy desktop integrations and desktop services that needs to talk with other desktop services, maybe hundreds, as we heard before, then it's, it's just web-based. We also do integrate some desktop applications. All right, so for many years, software has been in a, like GP systems and chiropractor systems has been designed in a way where we kind of put a lot of the hard work down to the physician or their local clinic. They need to have servers there, they need to have special infrastructure, they need to have a lot of things before they can even just get started with doing their actual job. And whenever things would break down in a typical Norwegian clinic, then they would have to call somebody from Oslo. And I don't know if you guys know Norway, but it's a pretty big place, and you need to take a plane and drive a car for six hours, and suddenly you get to the clinic, and then you're missing some sort of tool that you forgot in Oslo. And that kind of sucks. Um, but with Patience Guy, they have no hardware, they have no installation. So when building this stuff, you have to build a lot of different applications within the application. So we saw that we could not do this on our own. So we teamed up with different other vendors. And some of the more popular apps that we have in the Patience Guy platform today is, of course, the, the writing of the journal itself. I mean, that's pretty important, right? But generating value for GPs or physiotherapists or chiropractors or whatever, you need a lot of other systems because that's where the administrational burden is. So we did a VoIP system, a telephone system. We built that from scratch directly into the browser, no installation using WebRTC. Um, and we've been a ton of other things, scheduling systems, economy systems. We have one of our partners here today who has the payment integration as well. And yeah, learning systems and, and forms and labs and whatever and whatnot. Uh, so you need a bunch of all of these systems to get, to get to that one complete cloud. And we've tried our best to kind of get there, and now we're looking for new people who can kind of help us build the additional apps in the Patient Sky app store. Yeah, we can call it that. So basically, our customers would go in, have a talk with us and say, I want this module, that module, and this module, and it's completely configurable for every level both the practitioners, the secretaries, and the part-times can have their own app store that they can collect their systems from. So I know that four and a half million patients are not that much because, in, for instance, here you guys have a lot of million people living, and if you compare it to the German market or whatnot, it's huge. So, but for us, Norway is the, the beginning, and we kind of had a, a good start there. So just with the systems that we have today, I mean, this is a real system. This is not stuff that I'm making up. Uh, this is not things that we want to do, this is things that we have done. So today, we see that we have more than 10,000 calls on the VoIP system for small Norway. And this means that we can integrate this into every single piece of microservice that want to facilitate some extra for that healthcare personnel who is picking up that phone. It's completely integrated, which means that they know the social security number, they know that patient, they don't need to look it up, and when they forward that call, they already get that context with them for the people who are picking up the phone on the other end. Right now, we're also facilitating about 15,000 patient bookings a day. And this means that 15,000 times somebody is picking up the phone and booking their own appointment. So this saves a ton of time for that secretary to not sit there and negotiate, do you want to come Friday at 8, Friday at 10, maybe Monday? And in this way, we're using one of the most unused resources in healthcare, which is probably the patient themselves, right? I mean, who would have a bigger willingness to kind of make sure that the doctor would use more time actually treating them than doing administrational work? I think the patient kind of wants that. And I think the NHS and, and the American Doctors Association came out with a report stating that somewhere between two-thirds and 70% of all the time that a doctor uses they use on administrational work. And we need to get that down into a level where they can do clinical work instead. So just doing the lunch break that we're supposed to have in, when I'm done, and don't worry, it's not going to be long, uh, we're going to have about 2,500 booking during this lunch break. And that's, for me, 
as a startup person, that is, I mean, that's something that kind of gets you up in the morning and wants you to get to work. So the result of just putting this into the cloud, making people build apps on the patient sky platform, we see, and we know this number is true because we acquired two of the existing journal systems out there, and therefore we have a very good way of measuring how things are going between the patient sky platform and, and the existing systems, is that we see there is a reduction of 40% of their administration work. And this is due to us being able to like, facilitate a lot of stuff for the patient so they can do self-service, but it's also because we have reduced the installation process, the heavy burdens of slow computers and whatnot. And yeah, so this, this stuff works and it's amazing and we need to be even better, okay? So, yay, it works and, and uh, yeah, woo, you can clap if you want to. Um, and yeah, so a picture of the app. Uh, and it's, it's already in the App Store set. Uh, more than a, p a million patients use it, uses this already. Uh, so go download it if you have a Norwegian social security number. If you don't, then you just end up on the login screen. And that's pretty boring, so yeah. But you can download it, then we can get some higher ratings. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, OK, so obviously we're not the only platform. Probably not going to be the only platform. So what did we learn? That's why we're here today, right? To share. Well, finding number one, don't do everything yourself. This is by far the most important finding that we had to acknowledge because healthcare is just super hard. I've been working with Ian for several years and we have been debating long nights, long days, <laughs> just to get started with this stuff in 2014. And it is so hard, and there are so many complex levels that you need to figure out what you're good at, and then you need to do that. So my, what I would kind of say to people, use a platform. This is by far the best approach. Find somebody who has this, preferably patient guy if you want to do that, uh, and then hook onto that platform, and then generate the value you want to generate from there. So yeah, building international scalable solutions is very hard. So a question that I kind of always ask to people when they say they want to go out and build some software for healthcare is that kind of what scales best? Is it core products across verticals? Do you want to use your same knowledge in different verticals? Or do you want to have like new types of expertise? And you can kind of rephrase this to do you want to reuse your knowledge or do you want to become experts in everything? And I truly believe that number two is, if not impossible, extremely hard. So accepting, accepting that you want to reuse your knowledge and accepting that you can't do everything yourself, then hooking up with some people who can kind of help you along the way, that would probably give you the best, best results. So finding number two. Boilerplate is extremely, extremely expensive. So for those of you who are not technical, this is all the stuff that you need to do in order to generate some sort of value for your customers. Boilerplate is expensive. It is login systems, authentication systems, user management systems. Like if you want to do sm small clinics or large clinics, you need to figure out how the whole user scheme works, et cetera, et cetera. And for us, just figuring out that part, that took years. And everybody right now, everybody who creates software is basically like they're almost only completing about boilerplate than actual end product. And I think we should go away from that and say, let's share the boilerplate. Let's move towards actually generating value. And let's compete about that, because that's where all the cool stuff is happening, right? So don't, don't do boilerplate. It takes years. And find and hook up with some people who have done that. Uh, that will just give you a massive leap into whatever value that you want to add. And lastly, the, the third finding, there's always three things, right? So the third, third, third finding is that healthcare changes. For, like, this is both a positive and a negative thing, but if you look how a physician worked 50 years ago or 80 years ago, it has probably changed a lot. So in Norway, for instance, like in the old days, the doctor would just be sitting in his cabin, and then people would come up to him and ask him, like, I have this rash, what am I supposed to do? 
but now they're working in the ambulance, they're working at the elder care facility, they're working from the cabin still, uh, but they're also working from their normal doctor's offices, etc. And we need to be able to facilitate these workflows for that doctor or for that physician, uh, and, and we need to accept that things change. Other things that change would be legislation, rules about uh, reimbursement, so in no way you pay to go for the doctor, and these things change all the time. It could be also things like um, insurance and such, if you look uh, cross-border. So accept this and use it to your advantage by being, instead of having this huge monolith where you need to be an expert in everything, then figure out what you're good at, do that simple thing, single thing, not simple, single thing, and then kind of use the verticals for that thing. So what to do, and I know it's a no-no word now, Ian, so we call it the data li liquidity. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, interoperability, probably the hardest word for a Dane to tell, say. Uh, it's a good thing, so we really love open EHR. We are open air, or fire. And, and this is the thing that is gonna make, or has already made the Patient Sky platform better at working together internally. This is what facilitates us to create modules inside that ecosystem. And this is also what facilitates, for instance, with the fire resources, for us to expose uh, our systems uh, uh, data and, and, and be able to collaborate with the world outside. So that's, so that's really, really cool. And I think we need to remember to say thank you for all the people who have done some amazing work within that community. And then we need to kiss the product, keep it simple. So we need to, instead of completely just going out there and just building again and again these huge monoliths, we need to have specialized modules we need to stop competing on the boilerplate. We need to build on a platform because the majority of your services, the majority of the software that we need to build is going to use a ton of services that everybody else is also going to use, right? So for instance, at the PageSky platform, we have more than 80 services. So these are just one, some of them. So for instance, the terminology service or terminology server, one of the most important things in our entire system. If you look at the GDPR and the con consent, like every time a patient would, would uh, visit one of our clinics, they would need to consent, and they'll do that on the app or directly at the clinic. And all of these things, everybody needs this. So let's work together about this, and then you can compete with their actual core product. So if you want to do like an app on a platform like this, you could basically just go back home, I don't know how you guys do this here. I drink a cup of tea. I guess that's what you do in England. Figure out what you want to do. Download the, uh, the SDK or the, the Swagger install or whatever you want to do on the platform and then deliver the product to the customers. It's, it's pretty simple. So what happens? I mean, why are we not doing this? Why do we con continuously want to work in these isolated silos and then use some sort of interoperable data structures to kind of work across? But what would happen if we, we actually start working together in a more direct sense? So we've done this, and what we saw is that we could reduce, and this is not a number I'm making up, this is the actual number with real people or real companies. We saw a 85% uh, reduction in the development cost. So we have a project where like, there's this woman, he has, she has a company where they build these robots it's like a sci-fi, right? They, she builds these robots and then they drive around at the elder care uh, and also in, in, in these patients' homes and they give them tasks and whatnot and give them feedback. And she only had a couple of million krona to kind of make this project real. It would have been completely, like, it wouldn't have been possible if she hadn't had some sort of platform that she could stand on top of. And she is like, I just, the last time I talked with her, I, she received, I think it was two and a half thousand robot order. So she's just really uh, getting a good traction on this. So 85% uh, development cost reduction, that's a lot. You want, you want to get that, that's a good thing. Um, another thing that you get, and again, I'm not making these numbers up, this is actual numbers, is that we see that we can build things three times faster because all the infrastructure, all the boilerplates, all these things are out of the way and you can focus on what makes your product great. So you, you definitely want to get this. And then, of course, the buzzword, scalability. You don't need to install locally. 
You don't need to have people out on the, the, the physical locations. You can have a smaller team create product, and that makes it scalable. And as I said before, you can focus on value. So the unicorn that everybody is talking about in Norway is this, at least is this one patient, one journal. And I truly believe that the next, genera next generation of EHRs who will go for this more platform approach will have one patient, one journal, because they will be able to do this via having a good standard like OpenEHR, OpenAir, using Fire, and then of course having some sort of platform that can facilitate that all the vendors who are coming there can create some really, really nice product. So this is actually kind of the end of my presentation. And I truly hope that somebody will help us revolutionize healthcare together. Yeah, thank you. Beautifully timed. Do we have a couple of questions for Laos before? He's obviously very hungry and needing to go to lunch, but I'm sure he'll take a couple of questions. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, where does the data store? And are the healthcare providers happy with all the data in this cloud? Who owns the data? That kind of side of issues. Could you say something about that? Yeah. Um, so as I said, we, we do not use AWS or a a Azure. So we have built our own hosting centers, which is on a national based. So we have one in Norway, for instance, uh, which contains all the Norwegian healthcare. And also in Norway, it's the, the, the patient owns their own data, uh, and, and therefore we have stored everything in, in that same country. Yeah. Any other questions? Nobody? Oh, sorry. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. One question I have for the, for the SDK part, since you saw that there there's a possibility to just download an SDK, just create a module, and then publish that. Um, I'm kind of worried about in that sense that if we do that kind of process, how, how can we make sure that the workflows that are used by the clinicians will be more or less robust so that we don't create too many small modules and, and just packages? Yeah. So there are different ways that you can integrate on the patient sky platform. There are different hooks you can do in the system in different workflows. And everything is event-based, which is also a very popular word in these. And then you can su subscribe to some of these events. So the clinics themselves, just like you have an app store on your app, they kind of define which apps that they want to use. It's just called modules in our terminology. And those modules will then interconnect in the different flows that they have configured themselves for. So there is, of course, limitations. But the way, like, it's, it's easier if you look at the technical details. But you can hook into different workflows. You can add uh, services in different layers. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I was just wondering that uh, is there some kind of a theming between the modules that uh, these particle applications are used yeah. in this particle workflow? Super nice question. I'm an interaction designer of trade, and this was one of the most important things for me when we designed the platform, is that the user needs to feel this as one product. So we share uh, the whole uh, usability layer, front end layer, between the different modules. So one of the things that you get in the package is that you get the, the, the design from us and all the components that you need to use, and then you can reuse those. So it feels, as for the end user, as one product. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks.